Welcome to Trigger and the second episode of our special on this rifle. It is a Marlin 1895 SBL and 4570 as manufactured by Ruger at their manufacturing facility in Mayadoc. It is, I believe, the best out of the box lever action I have ever handled and I've handled more than one or two. So what makes this gun so good? It's what has always made lever guns great. The action themselves is self is short. So you end up with a gun that's like 37 inches. Makes it easy to carry in the woods. Makes it easy to sling. Even when you're carrying it in your hand, because you've got a tubular magazine, it's comfortable to carry. And I've carried one around since I was pretty much a kid. What I wanted to show you in this episode is just touch base on what else is out there in 4570 and give you a comparison. First one I want to show you is this guy right here. Let's make it easy on me. This is a Henry. And it's an older Henry. It's Henry in 4570. It's color case carton. This one does not have the side loading gate. Henry had not offered the side loading gate when I got this gun. You can now get the Henry, get exactly a gun just exactly like this except with the slide loading gate. And you also have still, Henry has the cut tube where this comes out, you load it in the front. Actually, it makes the Henry the easiest gun to unload of all the lever guns. You don't have to work the action, you just slide them out the front. 24 inch octagonal barrel, that's going to add weight, call it eight and a half pounds, maybe a pound heavier than uh, the, the new Marlin. It's also drilled and tapped, a flat top. One of the big innovations of Marlin, of course, was that the frame was solid. And whereas Winchester's, obviously, the frame wasn't when you work a Winchester, it opens up, uh, which allowed you to put scopes on it, sights on it. It added to your options. And you have those options here on this Henry. Um, one of the things Henry has done in their 25 years, and by the way, this is the 25th anniversary of, of Henry, so. Oh gosh, all you guys there, uh, Mr. Imperato, congratulations. They upped the ante for fit, fitment. When you saw, as you did last week, my old Marlin that I got at probably the low ebb for that, that company, it was, at, it was being produced at the same time Henry was producing really nice looking guns. Um, again, the fit is very good. Typically, Henry would is really good as well. And, and secondly, Henry allows you to buy a premium wood option, which is a neat thing. So this is a 4570. It's got four shots, four plus one instead of six plus, plus one. But these guns themselves, the Henrys, have been used by professional hunters in Africa for very, very big game. This is an excellent 4570, and the extra weight will soak up some of that ammo we're going to talk about in the next segment. Finally, just to show you a quick comparison of what is the difference between an out-of-the-box and, and a custom gun. This is, um, this is my baby. <laughs> uh, this is a Marlin in 4570 from their custom shop, uh, which was run by Carlos Martinez, was located in the same facility as Dakota Rifles, some of the finest rifles in the world. This rifle was built to my specifications exactly. It was built as a big game hunting rifle and has been used as a big game hunting rifle. It's got some scars on it. But one of the things that you see a little bit of difference in it is when you go to the custom shop, the fitment on the wood where we fit the wood to the metal isn't just good. It's perfect. If you look at this forend, it is slim, almost like an English shotgun, that slim. The fitment itself, wood to metal, absolutely perfect. They flow into each other. I believe this color case hardening was uh, done by Mr. Doug Turnbull, who certainly knows how to do color case card hardening on any kind of piece of metal. You'll notice it's got a leather piece here because as a dangerous game rifle, it has to be run very quickly, which means I'm going to hit it as hard as I can. I want my second shot to be as fast as humanly possible. And my PH in Africa told me my second shots were almost on par with his double rifle. 
Here, leather butt pad makes it sit a little better. What you don't see here is about half an inch of sorbethane in the back. Did not come with a big thick recoil pad and I shot cannonballs out of it. Uh, particularly, it has a Skinner Express sight on it, uh, which is, by the way, sighted in for Hornady 325 grain bullets that we talked about last week. So, it is also 6 plus 1, 4570. It weighs a half pound less than the Marlin, the Marlin 4570. It kicks twice as hard. So, I wanted to at least give you a comparison so you can see, okay, out of the box, out of the box, custom, and see what we're talking about here. This, by the way, is number one custom woods. When we come back, I want to talk to you about different levels of 4570 and how they work out in the new Marlin. Welcome back to Triggered and our two-part special on the Marlin 1895 SBL 4570, the biggest gun story of 2021. People have asked me, and actually I asked Ruger, why would you come out with a 4570 in a lever gun before, before you came out with the 3030, which is of course the classic lever gun cartridge? And the reply was really simple. Everyone loves the 4570, and I found the 4570 to be an utterly fascinating cartridge. It dates back from like 1873. It was made uh, for government model trapdoor spring fields. Uh, they were issued to Custer. It didn't go well. But the 4570 itself, there was a zillion cartridges roughly in that time period, big bore, big hunting cartridges, and usually they were designated by the caliber, 45, and the amount of black powder that went into the load, 4570, 45 caliber, 70 grains of black powder. You could have 40, 60, 40, 82, could go on and on and on. But of all of them, the 4570 was the one that survived. And it survived because it turned out to be incredibly versatile. I believe in uh, 1972, Marlin came out with the first 4570. They cre re originally, Marlin had made a gun called 1895 in those heavy calibers. And that went for 22 years, was discontinued in, in the early part of the 19th century. 1972, Marlin came back with a gun that they call the 1895, but was instead based on their 336 rock solid action. And they chambered it for the 4570, and it was a real hit. For a long time, you had to think of 4570 in three levels. Level one was a cartridge that you could use in a trapdoor Springfield and not turn it into a hand grenade. Number two, a level of cartridge that you could use in lever guns. Number three, a level of cartridge that you could use in single shot rifles. An example being the Ruger number one, 4570. Well, things have changed since then. Especially Ashley Garrett created Garrett cartridges and he worked on bringing forward serious dinosaur killing, what he called Plus P 4570, designed to work in all the modern lever guns. I found the new Marlin to be pretty ecumenical in the ammunition that it runs. It feeds pretty much everything. I have maybe half a dozen different uh, types of 4570 loads on hand. And whereas I have had some issues with other 4570 lever guns with uh, the Hornady Spitzer ammunition with the soft tip, what we're going to do here is I want to show you all three levels of ammunition from the Marlin, the new Marlin. First one is essentially on par with what Custard's men shot, although it is smokeless powder, 400 grain cast lead bullet. We also refer to that as a cupcake. Next is the standard hunting load. This is what I used in West Texas on mule deer, 325 grain Hornady at, I don't know, 16 or 2,000, a little over 2,000 feet per second. So. This particular bullet actually pushes the 4570 out to maybe a 200, 250 yard cartridge. 
A lot of these other bullets, you're looking at a 200 yard and in cartridge. Just want to think about that if you take these guns hunting. The third one we use is, is one of the ones that have changed everything about the 4570. These particular ones are from Buffalo Bore, my friend Tim Sundless at Buffalo Bore. It's Barnes, full metal jacket, flat point bullet, 500 grains, launched at 16, 1700 feet per second. You can shoot through a locomotive with that. How this changed the game was the super hot 4570s, which are safe to run in any of the Marlin lever guns, the Henry lever, any modern lever gun, any, say, Sharps reproduction, any of those guns, and obviously the Ruger single shots, have really turned this into a serious big game rifle. So you have that option on what to shoot. I'll give you a quick hint. If you're going to shoot big game and you know you're going to be shooting either Buffalo Bore Heavy, what they call 4570 Magnum, or Garrett Cartridge Plus P. Don't shoot a lot of them. Number one, you'll have to sell your car to pay for them. Number two, you'll have to sell your other car to pay for your shoulder damage. Stick to cupcakes and get a feel for the gun and the way the gun works. We'll be right back. This week's trigger is brought to you by Volkortsen Firearms. Excellence is essential. Taurus USA, prepare and protect. Rock Island Armory Arms Corps, home of the STK 100. When I was a kid, my father, who was an um, inveterate gun trader, always trading guns, he traded a gun for a package of old guns that included a trapdoor Springfield. And it was a junker. The barrel had been cut down to 16 and a half inches. The wood had been cut. And he gave it to me as sort of a joke. He goes, here, son, I'm sure if you can find some bullets, you'd like to shoot this. And I actually badgered him into taking me to a gun store. And I went in and said, I'd like a box of 4570. And, and the guy goes, we don't have those. I had to order special 4570 because that was a period of time when the 4570 had kind of disappeared from life. It had drifted away. But I will tell you this, when I took those 4570 rounds and I loaded them one at a time in that old trapdoor Springfield, it was a revelation. I realized that great big bullets was my future. So I have a lot of time on the 4570, a lot of time reloading it, a lot of different guns. I've always loved the Marlin guide gun. You know, it was called a guide gun originally because guides in Alaska used it because it shot a great big bullet. And in Alaska, there's great big animals, some of which will eat you. But I've always liked that gun. I've always liked taking it into the woods. I've always liked using it. And I've always been irritated that I couldn't get it exactly the way I wanted, which of course I, I finally did get a Marlin 4570 exactly the way I wanted it. A hunt that basically changed my entire view of hunting. Hunting Cape Buffalo, dangerous game up close with it. Absolutely amazing experience. I look at this Ruger and feel very privileged to have been among the first people to take it into the field to try it out on the ground as it were. I do believe it is the best out of the box lever action rifle I have ever shot. Does that mean it's perfect? <laughs> no. You know me. If nothing else, I'm picky. So you're asking what would I change? I'll tell you what I would change. Pretty straightforward. First thing I would change is the trigger. Wobbly flobbly. I don't like that. Um, about a six or seven pound trigger on this gun. I suspect with a Wild West Guns Happy Trigger, it's going to drop down to maybe four or five, which is where it should be. And it shouldn't be floppity woppity there. I'll probably put a lever cover on this if for no other reason than I like the way it looks. So that's an acceptable thing. The other thing I would really like to do with this gun is sandblast it, bead blast it, to where the finish on it was flat. I like I liked the nickel accoutrements, the hammer, the loading gate, but the rest of the gun I'd love to see flat, uh, maybe even cerakoted like a light brown or something that was not as um, um, bright in the woods because this is very bright. I look forward to getting a suppressor to put on it. Uh, yes, it makes it a little front heavy, but on the other hand, it makes it a little bit easier on you shooting it. Um, 4570 isn't a particular ear buster cartridge. 
So those are the few things that I might well change. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Ruger had everything to lose with this gun. There were a lot of people waiting to explain to Ruger that they did not know how to build a Marlin. And Ruger proved them wrong. I know they spent a fortune in essentially re-engineering this turn of the, of the 20th century technology into something that could be dealt with modern manufacturing techniques. They were thoughtful, they were careful, and most importantly to me is, is they listened to the shooters. They listened to the people out there in the field using the guns and they said, we're going to build a gun that those people will be happy to continue using and be happy to pass down to their kids, to their grandkids, because that's what a Marlin has always been. I'm Michael Bain. This is Triggered. Of course, you can find us for free, free, I tell you, on MBTV every week, michaelbain.tv. We're there for you. We're also on YouTube. We're also on Rumble. So until next week, stay safe.